Welcome to the Gridiron Roundup with your host, Randy Silver. Today we have your college football week four review. Storylines, scores, game review, standings, and the AP poll just released. Let's dive into it for you. College football AP top 25 week five poll. Let's go over the poll. Who's changed, who went in, who's up, who's down, and everything in between. Disclaimer. If it says AFCA coaches poll here, disregard that. This is the AP poll. ESPN has an error on their website. We caught it. Here are the new rankings that just came out. Georgia stays number one with 61 first place votes. Last week they had 57, so they went up four votes. Michigan stays number two. Ohio State moves up one. Florida State moves down one. Texas moves up one. USC moves down one. So your top four are Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, Georgia, 61 first place votes, Ohio State, two first place votes. And then you see there in eighth, Washington, a biased West Coast voter, maybe giving it right there, giving them one first place vote. So rounding out your top 10, USC six, Penn State seven, Washington eight, Oregon nine, Utah 10. Oregon had that massive win over Colorado was not a close match and we're going to show you some of the scores in the full video grid line roundup so go ahead and check that out it's in the link in the bio the rest of the rankings you have Alabama at 11 they move back up one after their win this week against Ole Miss LSU 12 Notre Dame moves down four with their loss at the last second to Ohio State Oklahoma stays even North Carolina up two, Duke up two, Washington State Big win over Oregon State, move up seven. Miami moves up three. Tennessee moves up one. Ole Miss moves down four. Oregon State moves down six. And we just talked about Ole Miss lost to Alabama. Oregon State lost to Washington State. And then four new teams move in the rankings this week. Missouri, Florida, Kansas, Kansas State round out. Who else received votes? Next closest team was Fresno State with 93 votes. Kentucky, TCU, Maryland, Texas A&M, Louisville, UCLA dropped out with their loss. Clemson, Syracuse, Colorado dropped out with their loss. They only got 29 votes in top 25. That was a big whooping that took them all the way out. They think that they couldn't beat any of these teams if they're not in the top 25, which is interesting because they beat TCU to start the season. Uh, Air Force, Iowa, Tulane, Wyoming, Marshall, James Madison, Liberty, Georgia State all received votes. Drop in the rankings, Iowa, Clemson, UCLA, and Colorado. So here's your top 25 right here, as we just talked about, scrolling through again, 25 to 1, Kansas State, Kansas, Florida, Missouri, Oregon State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Miami, Washington State, Duke, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, LSU, Alabama, Utah, Oregon, Washington, with one first place vote, Penn State, USC, Texas, Florida State, Ohio State, two first place votes, Michigan, and your top team again, Georgia, with 61 first place votes. If we look at week four ranking really quickly for you, this is where the AP top 25, you can see against the AFCAT coaches poll, Georgia, Michigan, Texas, Florida State, were your top four in the AP top 25. Coaches poll had Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, Ohio State, USC, Texas rounding out their top six, and then USC, Ohio State, their top six. So a little bit different there. When you scroll down, seven through 10, for top 25, Penn State, Washington, Notre Dame, Oregon, Penn State, Washington, Notre Dame, Utah and then Oregon. So expect this probably to be flipped. Utah did have a good win against UCLA. And then just scrolling through so you can see the rest. Who was there? Who's not? Colorado probably going to be out of both the coaches' polls you would expect. UCLA will. Washington State will. Clemson will. Iowa probably will. So these teams are out of the AP poll this week. Would not be surprised they're out of the coaches' poll. This come out usually a day after. So next week when we do a college football review, We'll show you that AFCAT coaches poll. But for this week, we have your week five AP coaches poll. Uh, this is your college football rankings week four review, meaning we're previewing week five because the AP poll just came out. Go ahead and subscribe. We'll give this to you every week. And of course, on the Grinnell Roundup, we have the full show out of our week four review, diving into storylines, key games, summaries, and more. It's link in the bio. Go check it out. Now let's move on to a key storyline. Have to put this first. Haley Van Voorhis becomes the first woman non-kicker to play in an NCAA football game. This is fantastic. She plays for D3, Senadora University. Great. She came on when uh, they were already up 26 points. 
she registered a quarterback hurry on third down, meaning she's in the stat book. What did Van Voris say? It's an amazing thing. I just wanted to get out there and do my thing. I want to show other people that it is what women can do to show what I can do. It's a big moment. I made the impossible possible, and I'm excited about that. She's 5'6", 145-pound junior. Hopefully, she'll get more playing time in this school. If she can get a tackle, anything like that, massive. Hopefully, this inspires young women and women everywhere to do what they can do. She's also a member of their track and field team, runs sprints, so she's a pretty good athlete. Congrats to Haley and everyone around her to make this accomplishment happen. Your college football scoreboard, top 25. Georgia soundly beat UAB 49-21. Michigan soundly beat Rutgers 31-7. Texas soundly beat Baylor 38-6. Clemson lost to Florida State in overtime 31-24. Clemson had the lead going into the third quarter. Late in the third quarter, Florida State got a strip sack, fumble return touchdown. From there, nobody scored in the fourth quarter. Very close game. Uh, Clemson had a chance to win the game with a field goal or go up three with like a minute to go. Kicker missed it. Game with overtime. Florida State won it all. We'll dive in this game. USC beat Arizona State 42-28. They now go face Colorado in Boulder next week. Game has a little bit less significance with Boulder losing to Oregon, but still will be fun when you have Sanders at QB versus Williams at QB. Ohio State. 17-14 17-14 win. We're going to key this game. Ohio State wins literally basically in the last play of the game. And we'll dive much more into this. What a game this was to watch. It was fun. It was thrilling. It was everything you expected more. Penn State shut out Iowa 31-0. Massive win for Penn State. Massive win in the Big Ten right here to uh, start the season off strong. 2-0 in the conference. And uh, Iowa will not be ranked because of this. Washington dismantled California 59-32. Probably last time they played in a long time as Washington is moving to the Big Ten and California is going to ACC. Talk about Oregon dismantling Colorado, 42 to 6. We'll key on this game. Low scoring affair, Utah beat UCLA 14-7. First play of the game, UCLA's uh, uh, true freshman QB threw a pick six, started the game strong for Utah, and defense rode them into victory. LSU win 34-31, nail-biting win over Arkansas. Alabama singly handily pretty easy beat Ole Miss 24-10 Washington State beat Oregon State 38-35 to you can see Oregon State made a massive comeback in the fourth quarter Washington State almost gave this game away hold on to win and go 4-0 Oklahoma beat Cincinnati 20-6 North Carolina beat Pittsburgh 41-24 Duke beat UConn 41-7 Miami beat Temple 41-7 crazy both were the same score Tennessee beat UTSA 45-14, and Florida beat Charlotte excuse me, 22-7. That's your top 25 scoreboard. Just looking at all the scores, so we're going to scroll through quickly so you can see your favorite team. First will be the top 25. Then we can go through and see the game. So your scores could be right here. Syracuse beat Army. Marshall beat Virginia Tech. Big loss, ACC by Virginia Tech right there. Kentucky beat Vanderbilt. Maryland beat Michigan State with the whole scandal going on with their coach uh, getting let go for cause. Louisville trounced Boston College after Boston College almost beat Florida State. Tough back-to-back losses there. Kansas beat BYU. Big win for them. Keep going through for you. Arizona beat Stanford by one. Northwestern University beat Minnesota in overtime. Indiana beat Akron in 4 OT. What a game by Akron to keep that game close. And then finally, Hawaii beat New Mexico State. So now that will take you to what are the actual standings of the conference. Overall, Memphis is leading the American Athletic Conference. Most teams haven't really played yet in the conference. Memphis is 3-1 the season. Here is the whole conference. For ACC, Florida State's in pole position, beating Clemson. They're 4 0 in the season, 2 0 in the conference. Louisville's 2 0 in the conference. Other teams 1 0. This will start to shake itself out. But you see here Clemson and Boston College both 0 2. Miami has not played a conference game yet. Big 12, Jayhawks 4 0 in the season, leading the conference 1 0. Oklahoma and Texas right there. Again, super early. This will shake itself out. Big 10, big win for Penn State over Iowa. We talked about. 
Penn State's 2-0 in the conference. Michigan State's 0-1 in the conference at the bottom. Here are the records. This will shake itself out. You expect Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State to be battling coming out of the East. West is definitely not as hard. Iowa can still bounce back there to get to the uh, Big Ten title game. Wisconsin in the lead, 1-0 in the conference, 3-1 record. Conference here in the USA, you can see right here. Independence, Notre Dame, tough loss to Ohio State. They're 4-1 on the season. Mid-American Conference, Ohio's leading 4-1 record, 1-0. Toledo from the West, 1-0 record, 3-1. Mount West Conference, Air Force is 4-0, 2-0 in conference. Big for them. Looks like a, they have a very good season coming up themselves. Points against, 51 points. Points for, 139 points. Bottom of the conference, Ohio, uh, excuse me, San Jose State, 1-4. Pac-12, last season's Pac-12. USC is 2-0 in the conference. 4-0 in the season. Oregon, 1-0 in the conference. Everyone else. So this will shake itself out. You can see here a lot of teams 4-0 and 3-1 in the conference. They look like the best conference on the season so far. They're going to start beating each other up. Colorado, 3-1 in the season. 0-1 in the conference. SEC East, Georgia is 1-0. 4-0 in the season. Kentucky is right there. Georgia, Kentucky, Florida look like they're going to be battling each other out for the top. And then West, it looks like it's going to be LSU, Alabama, Texas A&M is 3-1. Nice bounce back season for them. Jimbo Fisher needed as coach. Sub Sunbelt Conference, Georgia State's 4-0. James Madison is 4-0. On the West side, Arkansas State is 2-2, two two, but in the conference, 1-0. Now diving into games. Ohio State beat Notre Dame 17-14. You can see it was 3-0 at halftime. It was 10-7 going the fourth quarter. Ohio State get a touchdown with one second left, two yard run to win the game, seventeen to fourteen. It was an unbelievable game. Oh, it was fun to watch. We can see here the game leaders. McCord had a very efficient game for OSU. Did not turn the ball over. Hartman had one touchdown, no turnovers. Rushing yards: Esteen, fourteen carries, seventy yards. Henderson, 14 carries, 104 yards, one touchdown. And his one touchdown was like a 60-yard run. Really great run there. That helped Ohio State take the lead. The Notre Dame came back and took it. Ohio State got the win at the end of the game. You can see here, Notre Dame was looking like the winning. They had Ohio State on a fourth down in that final drive. If they could have stopped it, Notre Dame would have won. But no. Oh, that last play, Ohio State go and win the game. Total yards were extremely, extremely similar. This was a very evenly matched game. This could have gone both ways. It says 96% capacity. Feels like there were much more people there. That's interesting than 76,000. Biggest play of the game. Ohio State only had 10 men on the field. So you got one. Oh, whoops. Let's do this for you differently. So you got one, two at the top, three, four behind, five, six, seven, eight on the line, then nine, ten towards the outside. Second play, so this might be easier to see, one at the nose guard, three over there on the line. So you got four, four behind them, eight, and then you got two more, ten. So with seven seconds left, they stopped them on the pass, incomplete pass. Three seconds left, this run. If you have one more person on the line, maybe they stop them and they get the win. So inexcusable coaching how this happens this will be inquisitive by the Notre Dame staff the Notre Dame press are going to be into this just how you give up a touchdown with three seconds left because you have 10 players yeah who knows maybe they stop with 11 but the only of 10 players in the field is just you cannot allow that to happen in such a game in any game Ryan Day Ohio State coach we needed this win like that we needed the win like that Day Buckeyes best Irish critics what did he say? His emotions have been surging all week. Notre Dame former head coach Lou Holtz uh, said that Ohio State loses big games because the team isn't physical enough. Uh, Notre Dame will take the same approach and hand day a big stage defeat because it'll be more physical. At the end of the game, what did they say? I'm really upset about what Lou Holtz said publicly about our team, Ohio State, and the Buckeye Nation. We're not going to stand up for that. That's not even close to true. We had one bad half a couple years ago in Ann Arbor. The second half, every game we play, we're physical. We are in it. I don't know where this narrative is coming from. They proved it. They played a big physical game and won this game. Congrats, Ohio State. Who did not play a good game is Colorado. Got pummeled. They were down 35-0. to zero. One more time. 35-0 to nil at halftime. Became 42-0 before Oregon even scored. Second half, Oregon kept a 7-6 score game. 
but it was over at that point. Oregon looked dominant. You can see here all the touchdown plays that they had. When we look at the game leaders, Sanders was rushed all game. He got sacked seven times. He did not look comfortable. Travis Hunter was not playing with his rib injury, and they never got a chance to really do anything. Oregon got a fake punt when they were up 14-0, and they're – uh, in their 20, really turned the game. So it showed the intent Oregon had all game. Bo Nix, three touchdowns, one interception. He played really good, had a rushing touchdown, did well with his feet. When you see receiving yards across the board, uh, it was massive. Oregon, 94% chance to win when the game started, and it never got basically lower than that, 100% in the second quarter. Just wild. Team stats, or, uh, Oregon had 522 yards total. Colorado did not even break 200 yards on the season. Excuse me, on the game. Whew, brutal. 13 first downs total. I don't even want to show the full stats. This game was a sellout, 60,000 fans in Eugene. With a Dion say, no excuses after Oregon. We got our butt kicking. We played like hot garbage. Good old fashioned butt kicking, no excuses. I watched the whole press conference. He talked about, hey, sometimes you take your lumps, get us now. We're going to be better as we move on in the season. The next season, this is the worst over B. But give it to Oregon. They outcoached us. They outplayed us. Everything was better about them. That's just football. This is what I love about Dion. He can talk, but he knows how to get it. A lot of coaches will excuse, or a lot of players, excuse is not my fault, blah, blah, blah. He owns up to it. It was not Colorado's day, and he admits it. Now we got to come back and do better. Shadur said, I can't take sacks. Nothing magical. They just real. If you don't execute, you lose the game. They gotta. We gotta protect the QB and so much more. Florida State beat Clemson 31-24 in overtime. This was a really fun game to watch too. When you see the score summary, going into halftime, Clemson was up 17-14, and the third quarter 24-24, and then right here 31-24 overtime. Florida State win. Travis played a good game, 289 yards, two touchdowns. Kubnik, 283 yards, one touchdown for Clemson. Jay Wilson, five receptions, 94 yards. T. Brown, five receptions, 84 yards for uh, Clemson. This was back and forth, back and forth game. Team stats, Clemson out total yards. But that one turnover, which was a sack, strip, fumble, which for, turned for a touchdown, turned the tide of the game. Clemson could have gone up two scores. Otherwise, nope. Became a 0-0 game. It was tied. That turned the whole game. Just quickly, this game, Penn State rocked Iowa 31-0. 10-0 halftime. Shut out Iowa in the first half, and they went out and shut out Iowa in the second half. 14 points in the third quarter. Made it 24-0, and that was basically the game. Another touchdown for Penn State. Good win for Penn State. We look at the probability again, Penn State up there the whole time. Team stats. Iowa had 76 total yards. One more time. 76 total yards, four turnovers, four first downs. They almost had more turnovers than first downs. Brutal. Give your applause to Penn State offense. Give your applause to Penn State defense, of course, as well. In a big Pac-12 matchup, Utah beat UCLA 14-7. Utah went up 14-0 at halftime. Fair, the UCLA defense shut out Utah in the second half, but their offense could not really get anything going. Utah did this without their starting QB. They basically are using a backup or two backups to win, which is impressive. When they get them back, Utah's 4-0, 1-0 in conference. They are definitely national title contenders. D. Moore is a true freshman for UCLA. He got his welcome to the college football moment. First play of the game, pick six for Utah. And he looked down the wide receiver the whole time. It was easy for the defender to take it to the house. However, 230 yards, one touchdown, one interception, did not get it done. We talked about Utah have multiple QBs. Probability, uh, it was pretty much Utah throughout the whole game. U UCLA had 243 yards total on offense to two Utah's 219. So both offenses were not efficient. But defense wins championships. And Utah's defense did enough to win against UCLA. LSU beat Arkansas 34-31. You can see here Arkansas almost made a valiant comfort comeback in the second half to take it over. It was 13-10 Arkansas at halftime. Then it became 24-16. Arkansas got 15 points in the fourth quarter, but not enough to beat LSU. They're rivals in the SEC. When we look at the score, 
It was tied 24-24 in the fourth quarter. Touchdown LSU. Touchdown Arkansas, 31-31. And then 20-yard field goal with five seconds to go. LSU win the game. Probability. There was one point that Arkansas was a little bit more favored, but LSU throughout. Team stats. Big offensive affair. You see first downs very similar. Pat, total yards, 426 to 509. And then you look at the individual plays. Jay Daniels for LSU, somewhat fringe Heisman contender, four touchdowns, one interception. And the final game that we're going to go over, Washington State, Oregon State. Washington State won 38-35. We can see at halftime it was 28-14. Washington State had them doubled. Washington State went up 35-14. to Fourth quarter, Oregon State made a massive comeback. They could not do it. Lost 35-38. When we see here what happened in the fourth quarter, 26-yard run, Oregon makes 35-21. Field goal, Washington State, 38-21. Oregon State, big play, nine plays, 75 yards, two minutes, touchdown, touchdown, 13.98 yards, but did not get the onside kick to get the ball back. Seward, Washington State, Heisman contender for sure. 400 yards, four touchdowns on the season. He is playing fantastic. We look at the overall probability. It was mainly Washington State. A little bit dipped here when they got close, but never out of hand in terms of the percentage. Big offenses here. Big offenses here. Um, Washington State's a contender in the Pac-12. Look out USC. Look out Washington. Uh, and look out Utah. Game was in Pullman, Washington State. 10% attendance, 34,000. Both these teams are the only teams left in the Pac-12, so we'll see how everything turns out for them. Do they stay Pac-12? Do they become Mount West? We will find out shortly, hopefully. That is your college football week four review, storylines, scores, game review, and standings. Please come back here to Green Eye Roundup every week. On Thursday, we put out our college football preview so we can help you out for the weekend. And then, of course, on Sundays, we put out the review. We also have Green Eye Roundup for NFL. We put out previews on Saturday and then reviews on Tuesdays. We have your football roundup twice a week. And we have Hoops Roundup plus MMA Roundup. So we got all the sports for you. Come back here. Thank you for watching. Comment your thoughts. And of course, subscribe. Randy Silver, Grid Iron Roundup, out.